Good morning, good afternoon, and good day, everybody. David here, and today I want to cover the best and worst things about Beyond Light. Now, with Beyond Light's release just around the corner on November 10th, a lot of changes are going to be coming to Destiny. Some amazing, some potentially not so good. So today I want to cover the 10 best and worst things, five good, five bad, about what's coming with Beyond Light. Let's start off with the bad things. Number one, the Crucible being scaled down. So for me, as someone that spends a lot of time in the Crucible, I think it's a bit of a shame that it's getting scaled back as much as it is. You have maps going away, maps like Meltdown, Retribution, Emperor's Respite, Legion's Gulch. These are just some of the maps that I personally really like. Retribution, as you may remember, was a PlayStation exclusive and I'm a Xbox player the fact that I've just had access to that content not as long and it, it seems to hardly come up in rotation as well. Emperor's Respite is another map that never ever comes up and a map that I've always enjoyed playing. But I think it's a shame that these maps are going away. Obviously we don't know yet what potential new maps are coming. They're also reducing the amount of playlists there is. So Supremacy, Doubles, Momentum Control and Countdown are going. I personally didn't play much of Momentum Control but I loved doubles and I enjoy objective game modes as well so I think it's a shame that the more of the objective game types like Supremacy and Countdown are going um, so I just hope they are replaced with another mode and we're not just left with control as the only objective based game mode. Briefly moving on to number two, the raids going away. In a similar vein to uh, the Crucible feel the rage should be added to, not taken away. I feel sorry for all the potential new people coming to the Destiny franchise for the first time that have not got to experience some of Destiny's best content. I think some of the raids that are going, the raids like the Leviathan, Scourge of the Past and Crown of Sorrows, they were fantastic raids and offered some really like, unique rewards from them as well. I'm particularly fond of uh, Crown of Sorrows. That theme of pairing up with someone and passing the buff back and forth I think was genius and really set that raid apart from all the others. Under the raids going away will also come exotics associated with them. So again, new players coming to the franchise won't be able to obtain those exotics for the foreseeable future. I think Bungie have announced that they'll be brought back one day, but we don't know whether that's two weeks after the launch or whether it's two years after launch. We really have no idea when they're going to be there, so the fact that new players potentially won't be able to have those weapons and enjoy them, I think is a bit of a shame. Now, number three, no news of a sandbox update. Now this one could change in the coming weeks. Obviously Bungie are releasing more and more news about Beyond Light as it's getting closer. But as of now, there's been no hint of a sandbox change happening. By November, we would have had the same sandbox for about five to six months, I believe. Which is a long time. I don't know about you, but I'm getting just a little tired of just auto rifle spam. I really hope that they're not relying on weapon sunsetting as the only means of a sandbox change, because even though that might change the landscape of light raids and trials, Everyday Crucible is going to be subject to people still using just mountain top and fair winters and weapons like those that are just a little frustrating to not only go against but just tiring and just seeing over and over again. So I hope there is a sandbox change coming. Number four, old exotics not being obtainable. So again, this will include some of the raid exotics, but this will also include things like Sturm. Mida Multi Tool, Sleeper Simulum, Ace of Spades, The Last Word, Iznagi's Burden, Thorn, Bad Juju. Just basically every exotic that is tied to a quest, potentially disappearing for Beyond Night. I believe Bungie has said that these exotics will be getting moved to what they call a memorial kiosk. We don't know how that works. Potentially there could be just a limited number that you can obtain from a week to week basis. They've not said whether that includes the raid exotics because the raid exotics weren't in the list associated with that memorial kiosk. The quest line itself will be disappearing. So things like the last mission in the last word quest, 
and the last mission in the Ace of Spades quest as well. These missions were really awesome, like well thought out, story driven things that new players come in won't be able to experience that. I think they're missing out. Now, the last one for the worst category, number 5. Weapon sunsetting, but mainly focusing on weapons not getting equal replacements. We've known for a while weapon sunsetting is a thing, and it is disappointing if you've got a weapon that you really love that won't be as effective anymore in endgame content. So, things like for me, I've got the Kindled Orchid, the Rampage Kill Clip roll. I absolutely love that gun but it won't be effective anymore in in-game content. I used to use that thing in trials and even though it's a 140, because of those damage perks, you could still very much compete and would just absolutely tread people. So, weapon sunsetting as a whole is a little bit disappointing on that front, but my main concern is that potentially you could always be disappointed whatever loot you get, because it won't be equal to or better than what you already had. If I use that Kindled Orchid as another example, Bungie seem to be leaning away from the damage perks more and more, so I very much doubt they're going to release a weapon that has both Kill Clip and Rampage on it that can roll at the same time. Therefore, no matter what energy Hand Cannon I get, I'm always going to be comparing it to that weapon that I've already had and I've loved, but can't use it anymore. And uh, this works for Pinnacle Weapons as well. Pinnacle Weapons are going away, the quest lines for them are going away. So if you've had the Revoker, or if you're still getting destroyed by the Revoker, and then you research into the weapon as a new player, and you're like, oh, this is a cool weapon, really unique perk, how do I obtain this? You will not be able to get it, and every sniper, because of that pinnacle perk, every sniper that's going to be in the kinetic slot won't be as good as that sniper, but you'll always be disappointed if you've already had that sniper and you can't use it in like, trials anymore. If you don't have that sniper, you're always going to be at disadvantage when going against people that do have it. Now let's move on to something far more positive, and the five best things that is coming in November with Beyond Light. Number one, new subclasses. We've all seen the footage for the new subclasses. Now Bungie have the last few weeks have released more details about how the subclasses are going to work with the Warlocks focusing on freezing enemies, uh, Hunters focusing on slowing enemies down and Titans focusing on changing the landscape around them using like ice shards and creating like, ice barriers. All these changes make me very excited for how they're going to play in relationship to the current subclasses. Now number two, new weapons. Obviously, every DLC brings new weapons, new things to grind for, new designs, potentially new perks. This is all very exciting stuff. And in this, I am including Hawk Moon coming back. The epic and cannon from D1 is making a return alongside Thorn and the Last Word. And that makes me very, very happy indeed. Now, number three, the story. These big DLCs always have an epic story. Forsaken and Shadowkeep are some of my favourite storytelling that Destiny has ever done. And this particular one, I think, is going to go above and beyond this. The Exo Stranger has been part of Destiny since the vanilla campaign in Destiny 1. And she's always had so much mystery surrounding her, so much intrigue there to explore her lore, but also her relationship with our Guardian. And the fact that she's an EXO, that Cade was an EXO, and we're going to Europa, which I believe is the birthplace of the EXOs, and how the Bray facility is going to play into this. Now, Anna Bray and EXO Stranger, who is believed to be Anna Bray's sister, Elsie Bray, how their relationship can develop. So, all of these, like story lore, is someone like me is really, really exciting stuff. Number four. The Vault of Glass returning. The very original raid is coming back to Destiny 2 and this has made me over the moon. I absolutely loved the Vault of Glass. I think many Destiny 1 players feel the same way. I loved the different like, objectives, the different stages of the raid. I loved the boss fight at the end. And I loved all of the weapons associated with that raid. I hope we see weapons like Vex Mythic Glass and Fatebringer coming back or at least designs that are tip of the hat to those weapons. 
I also hope we get raids with specific perks come back. The potential there is really exciting to me and I'm looking forward to just seeing how they implement it. Now, the final thing I'm going to cover in this video. Number 5 for the best things coming to Beyond Light. That is the character customization, including aspects and fragments, and the potential of those being applied to our old subclasses. This is something I've wanted since Vanilla Destiny 2. The very first day I looked at the subclass tree and was slightly disappointed that it was a step back from what Destiny 1 had. Now, I think they might have gone above and beyond what Destiny 1 had. These aspects and fragments idea, basically applying mods to your actual subclasses, being able to give yourself a, if you're a hunter, giving yourself a weapon damage boost from like a knife kill or something, or giving yourself a smoke grenade that could also heal you. The potential, <laughs> the potential is limitless. The amounts of stuff that you could come up with as mods to apply to your subclasses is unreal and I really really hope that Bungie really just pushed the boat out on this. I used to look at Destiny as a super competitive like arena shooter but as I've played it more and more over the years I've kind of realized that the whole thing about Destiny is just creativity. Coming up with build that just absolutely destroys guardians in the crucible and raid bosses and just makes you feel like you're an absolute superhero god. <laughs> that was my 10 best and worst things coming to be online. If you've enjoyed the video please leave a like below, it really helps the channel out. And please put in the comment section if you agree with any of the points I've touched upon, if there's any you think that I've missed. And just your general anticipation about Beyond Light, things you're looking forward to, things that concern you. Let's get a discussion going. As always, I've been David. I stream over on Facebook at Dave the Spade Gaming. Link will be down below. I stream on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 1 pm UK time. As always, thank you for your time. Thank you for checking the channel out. I shall love you and leave you. Take care, and I shall see you all soon. Bye-bye. Down. What I wouldn't give to fight again beyond the walls. I would tear out a Vex heart with my teeth. I would sear the Cabal with my burning light, challenge the fallen Kells to personal combat and scatter them.